Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 31 on measure and integration. In the uh, last two lectures, we have been looking at the properties of the Lebesgue measure uh, on the uh, space R2 with respect to Borel measurable subsets of R2 and Lebesgue measurable subsets of R2. Uh, we will continue uh, studying uh, these properties of Lebesgue measure on the uh, space R2 a bit more today. Uh, if you recall, uh, we had looked in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, how does uh, the Lebesgue measurable sets and the Borel measurable sets behave with respect to the group operation and uh, uh, and uh, the topologically nice subsets of uh, the plane. So, uh, we showed uh, an important aspect uh, of the Lebesgue measure namely uh, up to a constant multiple Lebesgue measure uh, is the uh, only uh, translation invariant measure on uh, the space of uh, on the set of all uh, Lebesgue measurable and of course, uh, in particular the Borel measurable subsets of the plane. So, we will be making use of that property today, but uh, we will begin with looking at uh, some more uh, transformations uh, on the plane with respect to which Lebesgue measure can change and how does it change. So, let us begin by looking at today's uh, uh, topic is going to be Lebesgue measure and its properties uh, uh, further properties. So, let us just recall what we had uh, shown in the previous uh, lecture was that if E is a Borel measurable subset of R 2, then it is translate E plus x uh, uh, is also a Borel measurable subset in R 2 and the Lebesgue measure of the translated set is same as the Lebesgue measure uh, uh, of the original set. Uh, very much similar to uh, the properties on the real line. And we also showed that for a non-negative uh, measurable, Borel measurable function on R 2, if you look at the integral of the translated function that means f of x plus y d lambda uh, x is same as integral of f um, x with respect to x. And also, uh, we also showed that this is also equal to actually the integral of f of minus x. So, under reflections and translations the integrals do not uh, change. So, today we will start looking at uh, uh, another transformation on the plane namely for any vector x with components x and y in R 2. Let us see how, how does uh, this change if you multiply every element of a set with this vector. So, let us define uh, the vector x dot e to be equal to a x comma b y for every uh, element a b in E. That means, um, the component uh, the coordinate x coordinate is multiplied by uh, x and the y coordinate uh, is multiplied by y uh, for every element a b in E. So, uh, the x th the first coordinate changes by a. So, uh, the first coordinate a changes by x. So, it goes to a x and the second coordinate which is b goes to b times y. So, the claim now we want to prove is that for every uh, uh, Lebesgue measurable set E, this multiplied set x dot E is also a uh, Lebesgue measurable set and the Lebesgue measure of this transformed set is equal to absolute value of x y where x is the x component of the vector x and y is the uh, second component of the vector x. So, absolute value of x y times Lebesgue measure um, of the set E. So, let us see how do we prove this property. So, we are given a subset E which is Lebesgue measurable and we are given a vector x with components x comma y and we look at the vector x dot E which is all elements of the type A x comma uh, B y, where A and B is an element in E. 
So, uh, we want to check that for every subset E, which is Lebesgue measurable in the plane, implies that the vector x dot E is also Lebesgue measurable. So, that is the first part of the claim. Uh, the proof of uh, this uh, is on the similar lines as for the uh, translation, uh, namely we will uh, uh, collect together all the sets for which this property is true and uh, show that rectangles come uh, um, inside and show that this uh, class for which this is true forms a sigma algebra. So, everything will be inside. So, that is a sigma algebra technique essentially we are going to use. So, let us look at that. Let us form the collection A to be equal to all subsets E belonging to L of R 2 such that um, such that uh, x dot E belongs to L of R 2. So, let us look at that. So, let us observe. So, first observation is that this collection A is a sigma algebra. This collection A is a uh, sigma algebra that is uh, easy to check. I um, will just I will not write, I will just orally discuss this. So, let us take um, if a set uh, E belongs to it, then the observation is that uh, we want to show that complement also belongs to it. So, that is easy because x dot E complement is nothing but. Uh, so, x dot E complement is same as x dot E complement. So, if uh, x, if E belongs to this collection A, then x dot E belongs to this collection. So, its complement belongs to the Lebesgue measurable sets and the complement is equal to x dot E complement and uh, that implies. So, this belongs to L of R 2 will imply that x implies that E complement belongs to L of R 2. And uh, a similar, uh, uh, similar uh, computation will show that uh, this is also A is closed under countable union. So, that will prove it is a sigma algebra. Let us check the second property namely if I take uh, a rectangle. So, if I take a set E cross F, if I take a set E cross F where E and F both uh, belong to L of R, then what happens to x dot E? So, let us compute that. So, the, in that case, the vector x dot e cross f will look like. So, that is the x component multiplied with e cross the y component uh, multiplied by f. So, it is x e cross y f. And now, if x is a Lebesgue measurable set, we know that x dot e is a Lebesgue measurable set and uh, y times f also is a Lebesgue measurable set in the real line. So, this means this uh, belongs to L of R, uh, this is a set in L of R 2. So, that means, uh, if I take a rectangle sets of the type E cross f, where E is in, so that, uh, so E is in L of R and f is in L of R, then the rectangle uh, satisfies the property of being in the class A. So, that means, the L R cross L R is inside L of R 2. Okay. So, and uh, just now we observed that this is a sigma algebra. So, that will imply that L of R the product L of R is also in L of R 2. So, all the elements in the sigma algebra in the product sigma algebra L r cross L r are inside L of R 2. And now, L of R 2 is just the completion of this space. So, that is um, easy to uh, show that if I take an L set, then x dot E also is an L set. So, so also if E is E is a subset of R 2 and lambda R 2 of star of E is 0 then it is easy to check by leave it as an exercise that x dot e is again in L set, then x dot e lambda star r 2 is again in L. So, lambda uh, outer measure of that is again uh, measure 0. So, that will imply that also so implies that such sets. So, lambda sets for which 
So, the sets for which uh, uh, the Lebesgue measure is uh, 0, uh, Lebesgue outer measure is 0 are also in that class. So, that will imply uh, this along with the earlier fact. So, this fact and this fact together imply that the A is equal to L of R 2. So, this is basically the sigma algebra technique which is used to prove that uh, the class for every uh, to prove the fact that for every set E this property is true. So, x dot E belongs to L of uh, R 2 whenever E belongs to L of R 2. And next we want to check that the Lebesgue measure also is preserved. So, that again uh, is a proof which is similar to the earlier proof. So, let us, uh, so we want to check the claim, the second part of the claim is that the Lebesgue measure, the Lebesgue measure of the set x dot e is equal to uh, x y product Lebesgue measure of the set e. Okay. So, this is what we uh, want to check. So, let us uh, uh, observe the following. Uh, basically, we are going to apply uh, the monotone class uh, technique here uh, as in the case of the translation. So, let us define m to be the class of all sets E belonging to L of R 2 such that uh, this required claim. So, let us put that as a star. So, this property claim holds for the set E. So, uh, uh, the technique is to show that one that this class M is a monotone class. So, that is one step to show it is a monotone class. Two, show that the sets L r cross L r, the rectangles are inside this class M and third, this M is closed under finite disjoint unions, is closed under finite disjoint unions. Once these three steps are uh, proved, this will imply that m is equal to L of R 2 essentially. So, the idea is the following, uh, because these rectangles are inside m. So, second step says rectangles are inside m and first one says is a monotone class. So, the monotone class generated by these rectangles will be inside m. Okay. Now, and I'm, uh, third, third property says that this is also closed under finite disjoint unions. So, once it is a monotone class and it is closed under uh, finite uh, disjoint uh, unions that will imply that uh, the semi algebra generated by uh, the algebra generated by L r cross L r also is inside m. So, the monotone class generated by L r by L r will be in. So, let me just write these steps that why this will imply this. So, basically the reason is the following. So, here is the reason why this will happen. So, L r cross L r the rectangles inside m will imply by step 3 finite disjoint unions that the algebra generated by these rectangles will also be inside the class m because it is close, because the algebra generated by a semi algebra is nothing but the finite disjoint unions. And now, this will imply by 1 that m is a monotone class and this algebra is inside it. So, that will imply that the monotone class generated by this algebra. So, that is L r cross L r will also be inside m, but this our monotone class uh, theorem says that uh, this is nothing but the sigma algebra generated by this class. So, this will imply this is L r the product sigma algebra uh, Lebesgue measurable sets cross Lebesgue measurable sets is inside m. And now, once again one shows that this is also true for uh, uh, null sets. So, it will hold for completion. So, that will imply that L of R 2 which is the completion of this is also inside m and uh, that uh, inside m. So, that will prove the required result. So, the steps uh, that uh, this collection m 
is a monotone class and includes rectangles and is closed under finite disjoint unions. This proof, proof is similar to that of uh, the uh, proof when we had uh, translation of um, SAT e by a vector. So, I, um, I will suggest that you try this as an exercise yourself and uh, on the same lines as the earlier proof, because it is a repetition of the same idea again and again. So, it is better to get used to it by doing it yourself. So, prove that. So, that will prove the required claim namely. So, this property from the Lebesgue measure will be proved namely, uh, if uh, E is a Lebesgue measurable set, then the product x times E is also a Lebesgue measurable set and its Lebesgue measure is equal to uh, the um, Lebesgue measure uh, of the set E multiplied by absolute value of uh, the components uh, of x that were x comma y. So, this property uh, relates to something about multiplication and now, uh, we would like to uh, rewrite this uh, property in a slightly different way. So, let us, uh, okay, before that let me just uh, state uh, the corresponding result for integrals, namely that uh, the integ if f is a non-negative measurable function on R 2, then integral of x times t, this multiplication as defined uh, now is equal to the absolute value of x y. Uh, times the integral of the function f. So, that is how uh, if I multiply the function f each uh, by a vector x, then the integral changes by the value mod of x minus y. And the proof of this uh, is once again an application of uh, sigma algebra monotone class, the, uh, uh, simple function technique, I am sorry. And uh, uh, I would uh, like to leave it as an exercise uh, once again. Uh, so, copy the proof try to uh, uh, copy the proof for the translation x plus t saying that the integral is invariant and here the multiplication comes. So, the steps are in essentially first take f to be the indicator function um, of uh, a set measurable set and that uh, is just now we proved that result. And once it is true for uh, uh, indicator functions, uh, this being a, a um, equality involving integrations. So, the for it will hold for finite linear combinations that means, this will be true when f is a non negative simple measurable function. And uh, for a general non negative uh, measurable function, one takes limits of non negative uh, uh, simple measurable functions and essentially applies uh, uh, monotone convergence theorem to get that this result is also true. So, the standard uh, simple function uh, technique will give you a proof of this. So, I will say that you have a look at that proof uh, yourself. So, let us go to uh, some more uh, properties of Lebesgue measure. So, just now we proved that uh, for a Lebesgue measurable set E and a vector uh, x in R 2. So, this should be R 2. If you multiply, so lambda R 2 of x E is equal to the absolute value of the product uh, of the coordinates of the vector x with which you are multiplying into the Lebesgue measure of E. Uh, one can uh, reinterpret this result as follows, namely let us look at a transformation T from R 2 to R, a linear transformation whose matrix is given by uh, the vector uh, by the diagonal uh, by the diagonal matrix x 0 0 y. So, here is uh, some knowledge of linear algebra is required. So, let me uh, state a few things about uh, some facts about linear algebra that we are going to use. So, here is uh, some facts about linear algebra that we are uh, going to use. So, the first thing is that uh, uh, a linear transformation is uh, in linear algebra. So, let us look at I will be looking at linear transformations on R 2 only. So, let us uh, look at linear transformations on R 2. So, what is a linear transformation? A linear transformation a linear transformation is a function t from R 2 to R 2, which has the following property that t of if I take uh, alpha times a vector x, it is alpha times t of x 
for every alpha belonging to R and the vector x belonging to R 2. That is one property and the second that for any two vectors x and y, if I look at image of t of x plus y that is equal to t of x plus t of y for every x y belonging to R 2. So, such a map is called a linear transformation and uh, any such linear transformation T is also given by a matrix 2 by 2 matrix. So, let us call it as A, B, C and D. So, what is the meaning of this? That means, that T applied to a vector x is same as the if you call this as the matrix A that is a matrix A applied to the component uh, of x. So, let us call it as A B T applied to A B where x is equal to A comma B. So, this is a very standard uh, uh, thing in linear algebra that linear transformations are described by matrix multiplication where A is called the matrix corresponding to the linear transformation and that is obtained via basis um, of uh, R 2. So, uh, I will not go into details. So, that is what uh, essentially uh, will uh, require. So, let us look at uh, a special linear transformation namely T which comes from which comes from the matrix which is a diagonal matrix. So, A B 0 0. So, where will uh, this? So, what is the effect of the linear transformation T? T applied to a vector with components x y that is same as the matrix A 0 0 B applied to the column vector x y and the matrix multiplication says it is just A x and B y. Okay. A x plus 0 y plus 0 x and B y. So, that is same as in our notation that the vector x multiplied with uh, the vector with components x y. So, so um, in our notation when we had uh, this uh, matrix multi, uh, so we had this for any set E in uh, subset in R 2 and we had a vector x with components x y. So, saying that we are multiplying x with E the property that we studied just now is same as looking at the image of T uh, image of the set E under this linear transformation E. Okay. So, that is what uh, uh, that is what uh, um, uh, the interpretation is. So, uh, we can say that this multiplication by the vector x is transforming the set E by the um, map uh, linear transformation T which is a map from R 2 to uh, R 2 and the our result says that the result we proved just now says that the Lebesgue measure of R 2 of the set x dot e is equal to the absolute value of x y times the Lebesgue measure of the set E, where the vector x is equal to with components x and y. But if we, so, we said x dot e is the linear is the image of e under the linear transformation T, and also this T uh, is given by the diagonal matrix. A 0 0 B. Right? So, for this diagonal matrix there is there is a notion of what is called determinant of this transformation T. So, what is the determinant? A determinant for 2 by 2 is, is cross multiplying and subtracting the value. So, it is A times B for this determinant. So, absolute value of x y uh, uh, when you are multiplying by uh, x so, here the, our vector is with component x and y. So, this result can be interpreted as lambda r 2 of x dot e is equal to this absolute value of x y is nothing but the determinant of t times lambda r 2 of e. So, uh, our result that uh, under multiplication, under multiplication um, that is how the uh, value changes of the Lebesgue measure 
can be interpreted in terms of the linear transformations that if I take uh, the linear transformation t from R 2 to R 2, which gives this multiplication. So, uh, which gives this multiplication as interpreted earlier, then the Lebesgue measure of the translated set. So, this is T of E, the Lebesgue measure of the translated uh, of the transformed set is determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of the original set. So, this is the uh, this is the property interpreted in terms of uh, maps. So, uh, and let us also observe something called uh, uh, when uh, T is uh, singular in that case uh, uh, determinant of T is 0 and uh, the basically saying that if x or y are 0, then this uh, uh, both sides are 0 and uh, because uh, uh, okay. So, if neither x nor y is 0, then determinant is not 0 and T is non singular. So, let us uh, just look at uh, these facts uh, a bit uh, more uh, seriously. So, let us we have the map T from R 2 to R 2 okay. and this is given by uh, the diagonal matrix A 0 0 B. So, this is the matrix. So, that means any vector x y uh, goes to. Uh, so, x comma y a vector x goes to T of x, which is nothing but A x comma B y. Okay? Right. Now, let us observe a thing here that if either A is 0 or B is 0, if either A is 0 or B is 0, then determinant of T is equal to 0, because determinant of T is equal to equal to A times B. So, determinant of that means that is T is singular. Whenever determinant of a linear transformation is 0, T is singular that means it is in terms of functions it is not 1 1, it is not 1 1. So, T is a linear transformation which is singular. So, it is not 1 1. So, that implies that the image T R 2 of the whole space is a subspace of R 2, because under linear transformations uh, the image is always a subspace of dimension of T R 2 has to be less than or equal, uh, it cannot be uh, uh, 2 because then it will be 1 1 and uh, because it is not 1 1. So, it is less than or equal to 1. So, that uh, uh, so here I am discussing a bit of linear algebra because that will be required here. So, what are uh, so the question arises what are subspaces S of R 2 S a subspace and dimension of dimension of S less than or equal to 1. Okay. So, dimension of, so one possibility is dimension of S is equal to 0. So, that implies that S is just the vector 0 vector or secondly dimension of S is equal to 1 in that will imply that geometrically S is a line through the origin or mathematically I can write S as all x comma y where uh, it is uh, all x comma y where uh, a subspace S should look like y is equal to m x for some m. That means, uh, in R 2 a subspace has to be uh, nothing but a subspace is just a line through the origin. So, a s a subspace has to be a, a line uh, through the origin. So, once it is a line through the origin what is going to be uh, the Lebesgue measure of this line. So, the Lebesgue measure. So, let us look, look at the Lebesgue measure of R 2 
of this line S. So, obviously, the guess is this is going to be equal to 0. Uh, there are various ways of proving this. What one can do is um, to prove that Lebesgue measure of any line is equal to 0, what one can do is uh, try to approximate this line by uh, small rectangles or uh, so I think this is a good exercise to leave. So, that I leave it as an exercise to check that the Lebesgue measure essentially saying that the area of the line is equal to 0. Um, okay. right. So, uh, let us uh, use these facts. So, um, so, if T is singular, so if T is singular, then for every subset E contained in R 2, T of E is going to be a subset of dimension 1. So, is a subset of S dimension of S less than or equal to 1 implies that the Lebesgue measure of R 2 of this set E is going to be equal to 0. On the other hand, we also know that determinant also of uh, T is also equal to 0. So, that implies for, uh, for singular transformation T singular then uh, the Lebesgue measure of T of E equal to 0 equal to uh, determinant of T which is again 0 times Lebesgue measure of E. So, that uh, property holds when T is singular and if uh, uh, it is uh, uh, non-zero, if T is non-singular if t is non singular that means so determine and where t is given by a 0 0 b that implies that neither a nor b is equal to 0 and determinant of t is equal to a b okay so that again once again implies that uh, our earlier result uh, implies that lambda of R 2 of T of E is equal to uh, determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of the say T. So, when T is diagonal. So, for diagonal transformations, we have this result that if we take uh, a Lebesgue measurable set E and transform it according to a linear transformation, then the transformed set has got Lebesgue measure which is determinant of T absolute value times the original uh, Lebesgue measure of R 2. So, this is uh, for non singular determinant. So, the question uh, arises, uh, can we say that this result is true for all linear transformations. So, we have got a result for diagonal transformations namely uh, for if T is a diagonal transformation from R 2 to R 2 and we transform a Lebesgue measurable set according to this then the Lebesgue measure of the transformed set is absolute value of the determinant of T times the original measure and the question is can we say this result is also true for arbitrary linear transformations of the plane and we are going to prove yes that is uh, true it is uh, um, this result holds for all linear transformations in R 2. So, that is what we want to prove the theorem. So, the theorem says for all linear transformations in R 2 one can say that the uh, Lebesgue measure of the transform set is determinant of uh, the absolute value of the determinant of T times the Lebesgue measure of E. So, as before we will let uh, assume T is uh, uh, singular and that we have uh, just now observed when T is singular this result is true because T of R 2 is a subspace of R 2 of dimension uh, less than 2. So, it will be either a line or a single uh, point the origin vector 
So, in either case the Lebesgue measure of the transform set is equal to 0. So, it is a outer measurable set of uh, measure 0. So, it will belong to the Lebesgue measurable uh, is a Lebesgue measurable set. So, uh, so what we are saying is that if E is uh, a Lebesgue measurable set and T is a singular transformation then T of E is a um, set of outer Lebesgue measure 0 in the plane and hence it is Lebesgue measurable and uh, since the determinant of T is also 0. So, the required uh, property holds uh, for required property holds when uh, T is a singular transformation. Uh, now, second case is when T is uh, non singular. So, let us look at the case when T is non singular and we want to prove. So, T R 2 to R 2 non singular. So, claim for every E belonging to L Lebesgue measurable set T of E is also Lebesgue measurable and the Lebesgue measure of the transform set T of E is absolute value of determinant of T times Lebesgue measure of E. So, that is what we want to uh, check. So, let us we will first do it. So, uh, we will the let us assume for, for the time being that the set E is a uh, Borel subset in R 2. So, when E is a Borel subset of R 2, we want to check that T of E is also a Borel subset of R 2. So, that is the question we want to first analyze. So, for that we observe that if T is a linear transformation from R 2 to R 2, T linear and non singular that implies the non singularity implies T is bijective. Every linear transformation which is invertible uh, of course, has to be bijective uh, that is a uh, and secondly and on the on 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 the plane we have got the notion of topology convergence one can easily check that every linear transformation is continuous so we are using uh, two things here namely a linear transformation is non singular if and only if actually it is bijective and every linear transformation on uh, r2 to r2 is continuous. Actually, it is true for R n to R n, but we are only uh, considering it for R 2 to R 2. So, T is continuous. So, not only T is continuous, the inverse map bijective T inverse is also linear and hence continuous. So, any non singular linear transformation T from R 2 to R 2 is a continuous map and the inverse also is a continuous map. Once that is true, let us uh, so let us take a set U contained in R 2 and U open. So, that will imply T of U is open because T is uh, T inverse is continuous. So, that means that means this implies that T of U is a Borel set in R 2. So, what we are saying is if I look at the collection of all subsets all Borel subsets in R 2 such that the image is a Borel subset in R 2 then this collection A this collection A includes. So, open sets are inside this collection A and uh, uh, it is easy to check that so, uh, easy to check that this collection A is a sigma algebra. Basically, because B R 2 is a sigma algebra and T is a bijective map. So, A is a sigma algebra. So, that will imply that for that this, this collection A is actually equal to B R 2. That means, so that is for every set E 
which is a Borel set in R2 implies T of E is also a Borel subset of R2. Okay. So, T uh, preserves uh, the collection of all Borel sets. So, now let us uh, T is a map from R2 to R2. So, let us define. So, for every set E which is a Borel subset of R2, let us define a new measure mu of t as follows mu t of E is equal to Lebesgue measure of the set t times E. So, let us define. So, the claim 1 that mu t is a measure that is easy to check because so what is that is uh, easy to check because if uh, i take uh, the disjoint union of sets ei 1 to infinity and then look at mu t of that so that is going to be lambda of t of the disjoint union of the sets ei of the these sets and now, let us observe that uh, T is a 1 to 1 onto map. So, T of the union is going to be union of. So, it is a disjoint union of T of E i, i equal to 1 to infinity and lambda being a measure this is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity lambda r 2 of T of E i. And that is same as saying this is same as the summation i equal to 1 to infinity lambda r 2 of t of e i is mu t of e i. So, that uh, proves the fact that mu t is a measure. Okay. The second property we want to uh, check for this measure mu t is that mu t is translation invariant. So, let us uh, check that second property that mu t is translation is translation invariant on R 2. So, that means what? Let us take a Borel set in R 2 and let us take a vector x in R 2 and look at the vector E plus let look at the set E plus x. So, that is a translated set. So, mu t of this set is equal to by definition lambda R 2 of T of E plus x, but T is a, a linear transformation. So, that implies T of E plus x is just T of E plus T of x. So, that is a uh, that is a consequence of the fact that T is uh, linear. So, that will imply and Lebesgue measure being translation invariant that says this is lambda R 2 of T of E and that is same as mu t of e. So, that is same as uh, mu t of e. So, that it proves that mu t is a uh, translation invariant measure. Another fact about uh, this, uh, prop, uh, this measure, let us write as a third property. Let us take uh, uh, the set um, 0 1 cross 0 1 uh, which is a Borel set. Let us call this set as uh, uh, S, the square in uh, the plane. That is, of course, a closed set cross a closed set. So, that is a closed set. So, it is a Borel subset in uh, R2. And mu t of this set S is of uh, is equal to lambda R t of the Lebesgue measure of t of uh, uh, t of uh, uh, this uh, uh, mu t is t of 0 1 uh, uh, cross 0 1. Now, let us observe t of uh, 0 1 uh, cross uh, 0 1 and now let us observe that uh, T of uh, 0 1 cross uh, 0 1 
um, the observation is that uh, this is a bounded S is bounded and hence T of S is also bounded. It is also a, a bounded set and of course, its Lebesgue measure is positive with positive uh, uh, measure with Lebesgue measure uh, Lebesgue with Lebesgue measure of R 2 T s being positive and being bounded it has to be finite. So, that implies that the Lebesgue the measure mu t of s okay, the measure of mu t of s uh, is uh, the measure mu t of s is positive is bigger than 0 and less than infinity. So, these three properties of uh, the measure mu t let us look at what are the three properties of the measure mu t that we have proved. One, so we defined the measure mu t of e to be equal to lambda r 2 of t of e and we said first of all it is a measure that is one property that we proved. The second property we proved it is translation invariant and the third property we proved that there is a set of finite positive measure with respect to mu of t. So, all these three properties by the uniqueness of the Lebesgue measure in R 2 implies that mu t of a set every set E has to be equal to a constant multiple. So, that is C of t times uh, constant multiple of the Lebesgue measure of E for every. So, implies there exists a constant C of t bigger than 0 such that for every set E which is a Borel set. So, this is uh, uh, where we are using that the Lebesgue measure is essentially the only translation invariant measure on the plane. So, there is a con so any other translation invariant measure has to be a constant multiple of uh, the Lebesgue measure. So, what we have gotten is for every t non singular for every t non singular there exists a constant c of t such that Lebesgue measure mu t which is nothing but the Lebesgue measure of the transformed set t of e is equal to uh, is equal to the constant multiple c times t of the Lebesgue measure of the set E. So, this is uh, the property uh, that we have established that for every linear transformation the transformed set T of E will be uh, a Borel set and its Lebesgue measure will be a constant multiple of this. So, that means this gives us a map. So, hence we have for every non singular linear transformation we got a constant c of t for every t non singular and uh, what we want to do is to prove so to show that c of t is equal to absolute value of determinant of t for every t, for every t non singular. So, that is what uh, we want to uh, show. So, uh, once we do that, we will be uh, through with our uh, uh, construction because C of t being determinant that will prove that it is uh, non singular. So, at this stage uh, to prove that I need uh, some more facts about linear algebra and uh, it. So, to prove that we need some more uh, uh, facts about linear algebra and uh, we will not be able to complete uh, the proof uh, uh, in the remaining part of today's lecture. So, I will continue the proof next time. So, we will start from here saying that we have got for every non singular linear transformation t. Uh, a constant c of t that means there is a map uh, of t going to c of t and we want to show 
that this map does not uh, uh, this map uh, actually is nothing but uh, the determinant of uh, t. So, we will prove this uh, next time. Thank you.